Christ will bless us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Most welcome to Heart and Soul, where we explore the relationship between sports and faith, or some say it's religion. Today, we are honored to have in our midst a man who is renowned for his evangelism exploits around the world. You go to Ukraine, you go to Hungary, you hear his name. Go to the DR Congo, come down to Ghana. The last time I met him at an EP church at Dan Suman. It was quite a day for me watching him at close quarters delivering the sermon and doing the work of the Almighty God. So we have Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete as our guest on Heart and Soul today. Reverend Dr. You're most welcome to the program. Thank you, Rasmus, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for putting pressure on me to come today. Thank you so much for honoring us. I mean, he came in with a whole entourage. Uh, they were from one program. They just had to come here. And I need to get the credentials right. And so I say he's a world-renowned evangelist and economist. A lot of people don't know about the economist part of him. He's the founding president of Worldwide Miracle Outreach. Reverend, is there a supernatural dimension in sports? I think there's supernatural in everything. Everything. As we speak now, it's supernatural. The spirit world controls the physical world. And as a matter of fact, there is no gain saying that the Bible even say we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but wrestle against principalities and powers, except that it has been abused. Why do you say it's been abused? It's been abused because in our ignorance, we are pushed into spiritism when there is no need. Um, people don't train well, but they want good results. People are not the best side of the game, but they want to win. And as a matter of fact, for those of us who have been in sports over the years and are exposed to sports to some extent, know how much of spiritism has crippled into the sports arena. And um, I'm the first to admit that as a young boy, we play coast. As a young boy, I play school team. In fact, I've had to move from school to school. And the biggest challenge I've had in school is sports. I was privileged to be brilliant in school. My results went well, but I had issue with soccer. I had school with sports. And so if ever I've had a problem with school, it has to do with soccer. Something my parents thought I did well, but my parents were expecting me to be an intellectual. What I am today, of course, they insisted, and this is how I've ended up. So certainly there are. There are instances where sports teachers, sports masters, Coaches have led boys and young girls, young boys and young girls, into fetish priests, wow. into meeting deities, into going to spiritual leaders, and sometimes it's not positive. And so, I am, that is why when you invited me, and this was a topic, I was very keen to come back. I've been a victim before, and I'm the first to accept that. I remember when we were coast, we went to meet a malam and uh, in uh, Adodona and the malam put some tesbis and things together and I was playing with the sand I was showing how much we were going to score and who was going to score things and of course I've come from a Christian background my mother was a stone Methodist who sang in the Methodist choir my father even though was a court official, was a lay preacher who preached in the church every night in the Presbyterian church. And I thought it was a very funny thing. I laughed at them. I said, I go with the on the community. So I was sacked to go out of the 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 Malam place. Unfortunately for them, on the day of the match I was rather the one who scored the goal. <laughs> and so so these things do happen. But it has also made victim of a lot of our young men. Why do you say victims? Most people, instead of concentrating to train, to build their muscles, and to bring their tatties, and to build the mindset of sportsmanship, rather dwell on the spiritual aspect, and they miss it. And you know, when spiritual things captures you, and you don't have understanding of those spiritual things, you miss fire. And so a lot of people, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this thing with a lot of caution, but sadness in me that a lot of our black star boys who could not make it to the top was because they concentrated more on the spirits than training on the field. They go with attitude. I've had a chance to camp with some of the black stars. Hmm. And, I did uh, not know that bit of Yeah, you. I did. I did. Most okay. of them would call me, but at some stage I was being called the, the black star chaplain. 
I will wow. come all the way from London and camp with them. The excitement of being, and the boys like me. The good thing is that because I've played soccer myself before, every now and then when I pick the ball, the totals or some little, little dribbling, of course, uh, makes them know that, okay, you have it. And the excitement is there. They watch you on TV, they see you as an icon, they see you as a senior brother, as a father figure. And you can tell some of them, the whole thing is that they are over-connected. Some have their own malams, some have their own gurus, some have their own pastors, some of their own spiritual authority, don't have their own fetish priests. And so the essence of the soccer, the game, the sportsmanship, some people lose it in their bid to be spiritually connected. And, and, and I must say, I have had a chance to relate to some of them in a very intimate way. And, and, and you can tell that some of them want to see gone. I remember many years ago when Lai Kinson did not have the chance to play the World Cup. He called me. And he knew I had influence, so I could speak to him. And it was painful that Lai Kinson never had a chance to play the World Cup. But when he was suspended, at that time, if Ghana knew we were going to go through all, and to even call back from the first stages with a feature I've got. Like, because it was one of the best wingers we had. I like, miss it. Like, Kingston will come for prayers, will pray. John Mensah, Stephen Apia, that group, some of them went through their faces, and so we related. I related to them. I related to most of them. So there was even a time that we had certain slogan with them. We can do it. It is possible. So if you meet most of those black star players around the World Cup time, and they meet me, they have this slogan with me, it is possible. And those were the prayers we placed. I even made a joke at that time and told the coach that he should have put me in. <laughs> Go out there and play. Go out and play, play. And that was a joke though. But, but as I said, I, I heard a commentary uh, not long ago about my good friend and brother, Honorable Nilate Van Apoel, who used to be uh, the sports minister, who himself was a great sportsman. And in response journalist himself. And some of the comments were real. And and I can say that I will be the first to admit that for me, I almost became a big time practicing of another religion because of soccer. That is why I mean the dangers. I've seen Imana Bentila close quarters, for instance, mm -hmm. also tell me about Kolegono. Mm -hmm. You talk about Dona. I mean, that area, is the, there seems to be a lot, a lot of, you know, happening. They'll go to the beach at 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. And he tells me in the studio vividly, they will see Mami Water's spirit manifesting. They'll see also, they'll hear all sorts of voices, all in this attempt to win a game. So they will give it a prediction and then. The young boys, nobody wants to be behind, nobody wants to be in front at those odd hours. Is that more, something more, I mean, you, you spoke about something there. There's an initiation already taking place. Erasmus, I had a chance to read the six and seven book of Moses. And it's a very, I feel like tearing up now. I read the six and seven book of Moses. I got different colors of candle in the bit of that nonsense sports. It's painful. And you can imagine some of us were privileged to have had a way out. But there are some people who dwell in it. Some of us, because of academic laurel and by the grace of God, intelligence God gave us, or maybe upbringing from home, were able to develop into becoming intellectuals. And today, I can boldly say I'm an intellectual, I'm an academic. But there are people who ended up in soccer and their careers got broken. And a lot of people without the sports, there was no future for them. So it is true. People were introduced to different kind of books. People were different, introduced to different kind of deities. And as a matter of fact, I ended up even practicing Hinduism at some stage because of certain connections I had through soccer. Today I sit before you today, and the years down the line, over 40 years now, I still can still chant certain mantras of even Hinduism 
Om Trayamba Kamya Zimahi Sukadim Pustiwa Danam Umaru Kamewana Nijumi Yama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Mengalani Satu Mestratu Munya Om Mengalani Satu Mestraswati O Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Dev O Mahashwari Guru Shakshas Parad Brahma Lax Mystery Guru Namaha Om Shanti 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 Why am I chanting? Just to prove a point, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I also was in India, 2018. So I know a little bit about Om Shanti. Yeah. Yes. So I know about the Datratya. I know about Vishnu. I know about Krishna. I know about Hari Om. I know about Rama. I know about Krishna. I know about Vishnu. I know about Jivananda. I know about Rumi. I know about Gopa Janakananda. So why are you a Christian now? Because I found the answer. I finally found the answer. And the greatest thing that ever happened to me was waking up from that dead situation and coming to life. I met a man by the name Reverend Akwesia Mwaku, who led me to He died in the Lord's house in 1990. Led a me great. to the Lord. Yes, a great brother Mwaku. He led me to the Lord. He physically led me to my three friends of mine, Kobna Kodia, Willie Latte, myself, Lawrence Tete. He led us to the Lord. And it was never the same again. And all of a sudden, I heard of a Christ that can change life. I heard of a Christ that can turn your life around. And I realized that, oh, the real power was in the name that is above every other name. And that is what I keep telling the sportsmen, look for the real power. And that is Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You say something, some, you say something that was very important. Some are in Christianity, all right, but they also have legs or foot in other religions. And I was reading this book by Reverend Francis Boche, and he makes the same point that it seems the Christ Jesus we proclaim has not been presented, I don't know, maybe well presented to them, or they're not yet convinced. Because if you are really convinced about a power that is in the name Jesus, then as a Christian, you shouldn't have another foot in a fetish shrine. Or other places. What what yeah, really are these footballers is, missing? It is about knowledge. Until you have a clear understanding of what you do, you abuse it. I told you my parents were Christians, but to some extent, I just went to church. Hmm. It took Brahmakum, and don't forget that I was a student of religious studies. So was I a student of Bible knowledge. So I knew the Bible. I had a good grace in it. I mean, if you go to Ghana and you're going to read law, O level you do uh, really, uh, Bible knowledge, A level you do religious studies. So that was for the classroom. But when I met Brahm Akum, I realized that there is that Jesus that we have not connected. And that connection was what changed the entirety of my life. That is what you see today. That is the success story of the Lawrence Tete you are happy to host today. So I think that we should go back to the basis. And the basis is simple. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, regardless of your race, color, creed, or sex, whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. I think that we have a responsibility in the church. And I'm happy to be the first to admit that the church is not doing enough. We should stop thinking we are reaching out. We are not reaching out to anybody. We should go to the schools. We should go to the secondary schools. We are looking for adults. We should look for the babies. Train the child the way of the Lord. And when they grow, they will not depart. What were inculcated in us in preparatory school, for those of us who went to preparatory school, or in Saito, which some of uh, the elementary school, which some people call Saito, or the experimental schools, is what become the foundation. And the Bible clearly says, if the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? So Christianity should go to the grassroots. And when we go to the basis, when people are well grounded in their faith and their understanding, since they will know to some extent, I said I laughed when I went to see the madam. Because what he was doing it didn't make sense. In my house, we pray. Did your father, did your mother know you were consulting the madam at that time? In fact, that was not part of what they were supposed to know at all. 
that is a secret part of it that a lot of young boys and young girls has been introduced into a lot of secret societies without the knowing of their parents that is why parents have a responsibility to know what their children do and to know where their children go in fact at the time when i was old enough to tell my mother and my father what i'd done on their blind side they had the biggest shock and trust me it was the god factor that has rescued me otherwise i'll be worth off so you, there are a lot of source men today who are confused they've consulted so many things and they themselves are not certain one of the things that will shock you today so I look at the marriage of a lot of sportsmen. The amount of money they get, yeah. the amount of resources they have, the amount of exposure they have, the amount of wealth they have amassed. Sportsmen should not have problem in marrying, but they have a lot of problem with marrying because spiritually some of them have been overconnected to certain spiritual world. And so we have a responsibility. There are some sportsmen today that I'm praying for. And when you finish praying for them, you know they need a prayer more. It's not all of us who are looking for their money. By the grace of God, some of us, by the grace of God, we are professionals ourselves. We have vocations ourselves. I have a calling in the ministry myself. I'm not hustling. So I'm not the type of person who's waiting to pray for you so you give me a car to pray for you so you buy a house for me. No, by the grace of God, those basic things. By the grace of God, I have them already. We want people's soul to be saved. We want people's life to be saved. We want people to be rescued. And a few of them, really, we do pray for them. I have a lot of sports personalities, not just in Ghana, across the globe that I pray for. And these are people who genuinely have seen your ministry. Every now and then when they are in recess, they want to come to your meeting, they want to come home. And don't forget that this issue about Occult in sports, it's not just in Ghana, it's around the globe. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It is more in even Europe than you can imagine. All right. On that note, we'll do the Did You Know segment on heart and soul. We always want to get uh, some deep, side, deep insights and also knowledge from elsewhere around the world. And this is an author, Francis Boche, who's actually done this work. And um, with Reverend Doctor in the studio with us today, he says in the African soccer arena, there's so much suspicion, alarm, scare, and apprehension as teams accuse each other of being involved in detestable acts in the name of spiritual intervention. Such are the fears that even seemingly genuine spiritual preparations and rituals may cause a stir and be condemned because of the suspicion that only witch doctors, magicians, and sorcerers spearhead the practice. Reverend, he makes a point about what he calls a genuine African religion, where herbalists and spiritualists gets up in the morning, prays for the protection of the Almighty, and goes his way. But then over time, diviners came in, sorcerers have come in, Islam has come in, Christianity has come in, and, and you know, so there's, there's been some changes on this, some, some revolution. Where do we draw the line? The question. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He shares on our way while we do his good will he abides with earth seal and with all who will trust and obey the chorus say trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey most time in our bid to be very traditional minded and be cultural minded, we miss the Lord. We have to be very mindful. Being a traditionalist or being a culturalist, does that bring solution? No. You need to know God for yourself. And as a matter of fact, sometimes in our bid to be too much African minded, we miss the Lord. Not. I'm an African true and true. All the homes I come from are king's home. I come from Dodo on my father's side. 
a great grandfather is Nene Soji, who led the Kataman War, who led the uh, Dodoa Forest War, who opened the doors for Ghana to capture British Togoland. My great grandfather is King Takita, you are the first, whose image is at the Mokola. So both homes on my mother's side and father's side, I come from tradition home. But what I'm saying is that we should know God for ourselves. And most often than not, we expose these young men and women out of ignorance. Most people have landed themselves into big trouble because they have gone to carry deities that they don't have control on. They make promises, they vow, they never redeem the vow, and they don't know that where's our spirit? Spirits don't die. Spirits don't die. I can tell you that after I've been in deliverance for some time, I can tell you you can only cast out spirit. Spirit don't die. So if what is chasing you is a spirit, then you are in trouble. And that is what has caused a lot of them cannot sleep. A lot of them are having nightmares. A lot of them, they go on the field, they are, their leg is broken. There are, a lot of pe there are people today who wonder why every day they have an injury. And they get injury at very crucial time. And even names, you know, this is a serious one I'm about to say in a sensitive. I was looking at Akame Nku. Hmm. How he missed the World Cup. 2014. In 2014, and I was looking at his name when I told my wife Barbara that this is sad. His name. It's only left with me. I can't come in. His name is I'm left alone. And truly, he would have been one of the best we had on the field. But name. And names are very spiritual. So pronouncements and things. And at that time, to have lost the World Cup because his feet got broken only in a training camp before the biggest ever exposure was going to have in his life that cannot be ordinary and so we have to look at everything holistically and also come to that place where we can be honest with ourselves that we've messed up some of the young men it's not late at all they can reconnect they can come back but in this spiritual direction they need spiritual leadership and genuine because in this day and age too, we are fixed yeah don't forget that even in the Christian arena we still have fetish priests yes when we're growing up we had professor diago professor hindu professor isa who spiritualize things and uh, they do this you go to opera square or um, um, um roxy or some of the uh, um, four courts of the cinema places how do you distinguish between the fake and the genuine Bible says by their fruit you shall know them. And sometimes it doesn't matter how sweet we talk, it doesn't matter how sharp we talk. People watch with time. You will find with out. time you find out. Okay. Dr. Lawrence Sutter in the studio. We'll do a quick break and when we come back there'll be a lot more. Some case studies and we'll wrap up on Heart and Soul. All right, most welcome back to Heart and Soul with Reverend Dr. Lawrence Setter in the studio. I mean, I can't even, it's, it's, it's looking surreal for me, getting him in the studio uh, with his busy schedule and all that. But Reverend, let's do some case studies. We've had some interviews on GTV Sports Black recently, Saving Our Passions, and we want to dwell on it quickly. The former U Minister of Youth and Sports, um, Honorable Neil Ante Van Der has had his say on this juju spiritism in football, as well as Derry Boateng, who throws us back 2012 AFCON. He says, we nearly did not play that semi-final game with Zambia because of juju suspicions in the camp. Watch this. It's, I've, I've had experience. I've slept in the cemetery before. I've bathed the water that's been used to bath dead bodies before. You understand? I've eaten certain things, swallowed certain things before. The worst part of it is one day we were given certain stones to put in our boots. Cabra, Jesus Christ. By the time 15 minutes, you got blisters and sore. So you could not even wear the boot anymore. Your toes are swollen. So the ball comes to you, you can't even kick. And they say that's going to win you a match. But you see, Kwaku, the thing is so endemic as people say that. I have had a story, a situation whereby a player who was sent outside to France 
wonderful player. He got to France because he will not be allowed to do those things in France. His football career ended. Because he has believed so much in those things. Yes. He thinks that without those things, there is no way he could play. Mm. But hold on a minute. Before I forget something, uh, the game that we play in Gabo, uh, in the semi-finals against Zambia, Yeah. I got a record on that game. Yes, I remember. The, uh, 87 minutes or something. I got a record. Before that game, we supposed to. Uh, we have 45 minutes to do a warm up. <laughs> and the Zambians are outside doing warm up, so we supposed to come. So Kusi Apia supposed to do the warm up with us. So he was standing in front of the tunnel. I came, and I think which player, Chinata Mason or someone, came. We're standing. The waiting rest of the place. Mm -hmm. Everyone saying that they want, they don't want to go on the fed fed, but the day you have to come before they will go on the fed. Hey, and look, boss, like, like, like 15 or 20 minutes, we're standing there without warm up, and Zambians are doing warm up. <laughs> so the only warm up that we did in that game is like just 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. Reverend Dr. Lawrence, Sete, I don't know what you say to that. Two case studies. It's it's real. And, and sometimes our sportsmen are misled by spiritual leaders. And sometimes it's nothing by being initiated into certain things. So most of the sportsmen become so superstitious that they're even scared of themselves. Do you know that today there are a lot of black star players who would not like to share room with their fellow teammates? You're confirming all that we're hearing. And the, and the essence of this whole campaign is teamwork. The essence of the campaign, in fact, when we were little, all the 22 players, school team, we stay in the same room. That's where the jama is. Solo no neho, I feel ne solo no neho. Oziana, solo no neho. The moral songs bring you together. Today, because of what certain players have to do on their own, they don't want anybody to be there. You'll be surprised, rather, malams and spiritualists and spiritual leaders and so called pastors and so called fetish priests are rather the ones who come to spend time with them. And so, in the end, the sportsmanship is gone. And then we lost focus of what was supposed to be our priority. And so, we need to help the young ones. We need to get them educated. It's not time to accuse any of them, but people must. And that is why in the team, in our Black Star team, or in our teams, not just the Black Star, but in all the sportsmanship, we need people who can psychologically psych the people who have to understand the essence of the sports, and also how they can be spiritually. There are two main religions in Ghana. Yes. Christianity and Muslims. And if you look at it, that is where the majority of the boys have come from. Some of us went to the extreme by going to Hinduism and these things. So let us get counselors from the Muslim fraternity, counselors from the Christianity fraternity. Let them join up with a the theme, and that is how they can be properly helped. Okay. So people can be shaping. Otherwise, most of them, and it goes without saying, there are a lot of sportsmen we have who are not academically inclined. And the gift they had was a soccer. Of yes, course, they made it. more money than the professor too. Yes. So they can also be helped because they become the able ambassadors and envoys of our countries. Yes. If you go to the Black Star field and like they are going to play the World Cup this year, they will be the ones that will sell Ghana, not President Nanado, not Lawrence Tete, not uh, President Joe Mahama. Nobody, but they are the ones who are going to be on the field that because of them, the flag of Ghana will be raised. To sell Ghana. And so we need to really encourage them to serve God, know God, work in God, because some of the ways they are taking will not help them. Fortunately, they fulfill scriptures. Mm -hmm. This, this, this scripture, I think, is just going to capture it. Maybe you have another one. But the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians says something. Mm -hmm. Finally. Finally. 
Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. I don't know if you can have it on the screen. Is that the same scripture you're thinking about? No, it's, it's a different one. scripture, yes. Okay. But that's, it said, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's skin. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of darkness, world, against the spiritual forces of evil and in the heavenly realm. Put on the full and the whole armor of God. But this one I'm going to say is that foolish Galatians, who, who has bewitched you? You started well in the spirit. And now you've ended in the flesh. Most of our boys and our girls have come from nowhere. Picked from the dungeons. Had no hope. They were singing song. Nyamin sum sum samburo. Sang beye we juma. Nyamin sum sum samburo. Samburo sam beye we juma. Nyami nyami. Sang beye we juma. Nyamin sum sum samburo. Samburo. They were singing song. La wo ye moko. Ni achole ye. So these were the things God used. So to build the soccer up. And all of a sudden. Rather when the doors get open. They foolishly live their God. And that is why most people go look at the under 17s. Where do they end up? No, them don't. There are some people today, I don't want to call names. That, that group, look at the group of Odate uh, 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 Lamte's group. Those group were powerful group. Where did they end up? And I look at them and I feel very sad because these were great men that God gave to Ghana. And some of them, only God knows. What they would have resulted in. And that face, that generation, we really didn't have them to pick up the mantle. They were the generation that should have picked up what we are fighting for today. Reverend Dr. Lawrence Sessia, I want to thank you again. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to get a, a part two at some point in time. I want to thank him for his time. He's a very busy man, moves around the world, the country, spreading the gospel and doing a lot more. Is a world-renowned evangelist and economist. A lot of people don't know, but he's come through from institution, great institution in Budapest and in London, with a PhD and then a founding president of Worldwide Miracle Outreach. Thank you again. Good. All right. So I sign off by saying, life is a test, it's a trust, and it's very temporal. So seek your Maker while you have your breath. Give your life to Christ. Bye for now. To meet again.